Every night at closing time, a man appears full down the blind, locks the door and leaves that world behind. Then within the music shop, everything comes to a stop. It's still enough to hear a fair drop. And then the world. That grows quiet with a final sigh. Promptly at the stroke of nine, and appears rolls up the blind, stop the whole thing over one time, and then the world. I'm home, children. I'm home. <laughs> Here I am. <laughs> what is this? What is this? I do... Oh, my. What is this? <laughs> What's a mess? What is? Look at this. Oh, my. What happened? Was it a typhoon? What Figaro! Figaro, Figaro! What happened to you, huh? What have you done, you greedy, greedy cat? Ah! Now, how many times have I told you not to try and stuff yourself with cat food the, the, the minute that my back is turned, huh? I'm sorry. Oh, sorry. Well, the cat is away. The mouse are bound to play, huh? You've got a bellyache. Well, I'm not surprised. Well, look at the mess. Look at the mess you have created. You've eaten up your whole supply of cat food for the next six weeks. Oh, no, come, 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 Figaro. Oh, I know what you'll need. Oh, yes, I understand. Now, the medicine that the, the, the Dr. Bontempo gave me, for, uh, I'll have to find it. It's, I remember, sir. <laughs> yes, here it is. It's your very last one, Figaro. Your very last one. Now, I know you won't chew it. I know, I know how did. Oh, yes, I remember how I gave it to you the last time. Yes, here we are. <clears throat> now, you will open your mouth. Come, come. Open your mouth. Come, come. It'll make you feel better. All right, I will pull the pill in here. And when I count three, I will blow it and you will swallow it, remember? Uh -huh. All right, here it is, right here. Now I count three. One, two, one. <laughs> you blew it first. Oh, Figaro, Figaro, what am I going to do with you, eh? <clears throat> Now, you better lie down. You better lie down. I will get you a hot water bottle. All right? Uh, yeah. Maybe you. you learn now not to do that again. Huh? Mm -hmm. All right. Good girl. Good for you. Oh, this cat will be the death of me. Look at the mess. The confusion. Coming. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. Oh, I didn't see you. You are so tall, you know. How are you this fine day? I'm very well, thank you. I've come in today as a customer. Oh, it's a customer, is it, eh? You mean you've come here to take home one of my little friends? Well, not exactly quite yet. <laughs> not exactly quite yet, but, but you've come here as a customer. Oh, very definitely as a customer. Ah, well, maybe you better explain the nature of your business. Okay. My birthday is coming up in a couple of weeks. <laughs> Your birthday? Well, then, congratulations are in order. Many happy returns. Oh, thank you very much. <laughs> well, any 
way, since it's my birthday and everything, my daddy told me that I could come down to the toy shop and pick out whatever I wanted. Whatever you want, eh? That's, That's right. right. I can have whatever I want. My daddy said so. Oh, well, I don't think you could ask for a better guarantee than that. So, what do you think it might be? Did you decide to choose? Well, I've given it a lot of thought. <laughs> I'm sure you have, huh? <laughs> and I've decided that my list is really quite extensive. Oh, extensive. That's a very pretty big word, isn't it? Well, it's a pretty big list. Somehow that doesn't surprise me. Look, choose, look about, see what you like. Choose. Well, hmm. Mm -hmm. I think I'll take that. And, um, maybe, oh, one of those. And let's see, one of those. And that, and that. And that, and that, and that, and that, and that, and that, and that. Wait a minute, wait a minute. I think maybe you want more that, that, that even Geppetto has in his whole store. Well, I, I could always go to another store later for anything that you don't have. But you do not need all those things. That's more than you could play with for, for a long, long time to come. Well, maybe, but a chance like this doesn't come along every day. You've got to take advantage. That's what grown-ups say. That's what grown-ups say, is it? Well, the grown-ups are wrong. I'm sure your daddy didn't mean for you to start acting so greedily. Well, hmm. Well, nothing. There are many examples of people who didn't use unexpected gifts wisely. Yeah? Name one. Name one I shall. Um, um, uh, I'll name one for you. Did you ever hear the story of the three wishes? No. <laughs> I didn't think so. Well, come here. I'll tell you. Come here. <clears throat> Sit down. I'll tell you. I'm going to tell you something that will make you see the whole problem in a new light. Problem? Mm-hmm. It can get to be a problem, you see, if you're not very careful. Well, maybe I better listen to the story. Maybe you better. Well, <clears throat> once upon a time... Not so long ago, a very peculiar couple lived alone in their cottage deep in the English countryside. The husband was generally considered to be the laziest man in the area, and most days you'd be sure to find him dozing off in his rocking chair. No wonder his wife was always angry and complaining about all the work he left piling up day after day. You lazy good-for-nothing. Don't you think it's time you got to work? Oh, my. What's the hurry, anyway? What's the hurry? You've been saying that for years. And just what is that supposed to mean? Just alone so I can whip my whistle before I get started. Why, you lazy good-for-nothing loafer. What a racket. out of my own house again. Who does she think she is, anyway? This must have been the hundredth, no, ten hundredth time he'd been thrown out by his wife. But each time he'd always been able to come back with some good excuse for her to take him back. But today, try as he could, he just couldn't think of a good enough reason for her to let him back. He just had to come up with a good one. Hello there. Hello. Huh? Oh, please, won't you help me over here? Won't you help me, please? Where are you? I still can't see you. Down here, at the foot of the tree. The husband bent way over to try to find where the wee voice was coming from. What have we here? He couldn't believe his eyes. There sat a tiny little princess wearing a gown of spun gold and riding on a miniature coach pulled by four tiny ponies. Oh, please, kind sir. My coach is bogged down in this puddle. Won't you help us out? Perhaps you can lift us out of here. I'm sorry, little lady, but as you can see, I'm not getting any younger, and I do hate so to lift the heavy things. But this is such a small little coach. I'm sure it wouldn't strain you. Won't you at least try? Well, you may be right. 
Just this once. And so the lazy husband reached down and plucked the coach and horses from the mud and set them down gently on dry land. Oh, thank you. You've been so kind. I want to give you something in payment. By the way, are you married? I certainly am. My wife has the worst temper in the country, and nothing I do ever pleases her. Oh, how terrible. You must be very unhappy. If you like, I'd be happy to go back and take care of your house for you. Oh, no, I don't think my wife would go for that at all. But thank you anyway. Well, in that case, I've decided to grant your wife three wishes that I'll make come true. You're going to give three wishes to my wife? That's right. But remember, three wishes only. And with that, the wee little princess disappeared into the sky. The lazy husband couldn't believe his eyes. He rushed home as quickly as he could and told his wife what had happened. You've gone too far this time. Do you expect me to believe a crazy story like that? But this time it's true. It really happened. You've got to believe me. I know you too well. You fell asleep in the forest again, and you're just trying to cover up. Oh, no, no, no. It really happened. That's enough. I've got more important things to worry about, like what we're going to have for dinner, for instance. Oh, if we could just afford some delicious sausages. No sooner than the words were out of her mouth, their dining table was covered with sausages. Ah! Oh! Ah! Yeah. Huh? The wife was surprised almost out of her shoes, and her husband couldn't believe his eyes. Hey, these sausages are real. Well, do you still think I made up that story? Uh, 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 uh. Well, they still had two wishes left, and they sat down to think of what to ask for. Say, I wondered if we'd be able to go back in time and recover our youth. Huh? Oh, to be young again. Ah! We'd end up like this again. We wouldn't have ended up like this if you'd have ambition and gotten a decent job. Who, me? Yes, you. And if we go back to our youth, you're going to get a full-time, decent, well-paying job. Do you understand? What? Why, I can't do that. L let's forget that idea. There must be a be better wish. The wife couldn't believe how lazy he was and flew into a rage. Why, you lazy good-for-nothing. I don't know what I ever saw in you. I could have married any boy in town, and I had to choose you. Well, I'll tell you one thing. I'm not going to put up with your laziness anymore. I wish you'd put these sausages on that long snoot of yours and get out of this house. Get out! Uh-oh. It was too late. She'd already made her wish. The wife's second wish had come true. The sausages were stuck fast to her husband's nose, and try as he might, he couldn't pull them off. Oh, no. Now you've done it. How in the world am I ever going to get these sausages off my nose? They pulled with all of their might, but the sausages were oh, stuck oh, fast. Oh. What were they to do? Hurry and use another wish to get these sausages off. Oh! No, you don't. You know as well as I do that if I wish these off, we'll be out of wishes. Well, there you go again, only thinking of yourself. Well, all I know is that if you weren't always so lazy, we never would have gotten into this. Well, that does it. <laughs> well, they yelled and they screamed long into the night, but neither one of those two hardheads would give in. Have you ever seen such nonsense? At last, when they could quarrel no more, they fell sound asleep. Well, the smell of those delicious sausages was too much for the mice to resist. In no time at all, those mice had hoisted the sausages on their shoulders and were off to hide them in their burrow. But when they began to nibble on their treasure, oh my goodness! When the wow. 
wife saw what was happening to her husband, all thoughts of the evening's quarrel disappeared and she ran to help him. was their third and final wish. All they had to show for their three wishes was the sausage the mice had left. But wait a second. I'm sorry. It's all my fault that we lost our wishes, dear. No, I was too selfish, darling. No, I've learned my lesson. I promised to work harder so that we could both have an easier life, dear. Really? Uh-huh. I promised to be a good husband. Oh, darling. And so it was that they began their second honeymoon. And from that day forth, they worked cheerfully side by side and became famous throughout the land for their happiness together. Wasn't that a wonderful gift that the little princess gave them? You see, it, sometimes wishes can lead you to, to some very silly consequences. Hey! <laughs> Who are you calling silly? I wasn't talking about you, but if the shoe fits, well, then don't blame the gobbler. Oh, what's that supposed to mean? I don't know. I'm not too sure, but it sounded appropriate to me. Oh, well, you know, I know a lot about wishing. Ooh. Oh, I didn't know about that. Oh, sure. I used to be related to a wishing well, you know. Now, uh, wait a minute, wait a minute, Mr. Jack in the Box. You expect me to believe that you were related to a wishing well? <laughs> maybe it wasn't exactly a wishing well. Uh, maybe, maybe it was more like a wishing packing crate. A packing crate? <laughs> oh, well, he always wished he was something else, like a Christmas present or a music box. Now, I guess he was pretty disappointed when I turned out to be a Jack in the Box. Hey, he thinks it's pretty demeaning. No, it's nothing of the sort. Nothing well, of the sort. Well, well, I go along with you, you know. I think that people should uh, should be very, very sensitive about the way that they are. This is a very good policy. <laughs> yes. I even made up a song about it, you know. A song? Yeah. It even has a musical accompaniment. Accompaniment? <laughs> <laughs> right. Just put on a record. A uh, pop! A little Ooh. respect here, pop! I never heard such a song. There, we'll put the record here. Okay. Right here. <laughs> <laughs> Decide what you wanted. Would you discover the world as a lover? Would you wish the same wish for every other? What would you do if all of your dreams could come true? What would you do if all of your wishes came true? What would you do? What you wanted, whoever, however, wherever, whenever you wanted to be. What would you do if all of your dreams could come true? What would you do if all of your dreams could come true? What would you do if all of So now that you've found something out about the limitations of wishes and just what can happen if you use them foolishly, oh, I suppose you're ready to make up your mind about your, your birthday presents. Well... Or um... you probably won oh, one of everything in the shop, right? Huh? How about starting off with one of these? Oh, uh, and this Geppetto. one? And this one over Mr. here? Geppetto. Yes? I think maybe I've changed my mind. <laughs> <laughs> 
You changed your mind? Well, not so much changed it as postponed it. I mean, my birthday isn't for another few weeks, and I guess there's no big hurry. If you ask me, you're, you're very wise to make no decision at all right now. Well, and there's something else. Yes? I think I'll choose what I like best and what I think would be the best to play with. Well, there's no reason to use up all of my wishes at once. Certainly not. <laughs> well, goodbye, Mr. Geppetto. I'll come back again when I've made up my mind. <laughs> goodbye. <laughs> I think you've been given uh, a better gift than a wish today. <laughs> uh, maybe it's the beginning of wisdom. Thank you. Bye. Bye. <laughs> ah, children, children, children. Children and wishes. The two things you can always depend on. And mostly, you can depend that children will always have more wishes than they know what to do with it. <laughs> children, <laughs> let's go back on the show. The greediness has been gone. <laughs> Every night at closing time, a man appears, pulls down the blind, locks the door and leaves that world behind. Then within the music shop, Stop. It's still enough to hear a fair drop And then the world Sounds begin to die, grows quiet with a final sigh. Promptly at the stroke of nine, the man appears, rolls up the blinds. 